So welcome everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Claire and I am the business librarian at Glenview Public Library. Uh, tonight's program is Home Energy Savings with CUB, Citizens Utility Board. And it'll be presented by Kate Schonk, who's the Sustainable Communities Liaison from the Citizens Utility Board. This program is presented in partnership with Glenview and Wilmette Public Libraries. Um, just a few things. Um, we'll be taking questions at the end of the program, so if you do have any questions that come up, please go ahead and add those to the Q&A box. And I think we'll go ahead and get started. Please welcome Kate. Hi, everyone. Thank you for the welcome. I'm happy to be here tonight. This is our presentation on home energy savings. And like Claire said, um, my name is Kate Schonk, and I am the Sustainable Communities Liaison for CUB. So just a little bit about Citizens Utility Board or CUB. Um, we are a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization. We represent utility rate pairs in front of organizations like the Illinois Commerce Commission, as well as the General Assembly and courts. Um, we also help individuals. We have a hotline that you can always call with any utility related questions. We have a website as well that has a wealth of knowledge um, and resources on utility related things. We also conduct um, consumer education. We have around 500 outreach events like this one per year. Uh, we do a lot of different media and publications that are also available on our website. Um, like blogs that you can read, different things like that. And we also have our virtual utility bill clinic email um, that is on the screen. It's ubc at citizensutilityboard.org. And you can always um, email us a copy of your bills to look over and one of our staff members will reach out to you um, just to sort of go over that or schedule a meeting with you to talk about it if you have any specific questions. Um, and just in general, we advocate for affordable and sustainable energy policies in Illinois. And this is just a little graphic we like to show. Uh, this is what people typically think of when they think of CUB. Uh, we like to go after the big utility companies and try to keep rates down. And this is our agenda for tonight. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about how to analyze your bills, and that is just going to be your electric bill and your gas bill. Um, then after that, I'm gonna talk about some utility scams to avoid and to look out for. Uh, then I'm gonna talk about energy efficiency and how you can um, be more efficient in your home and save money. And I'm also gonna talk at the end about financial assistance programs and disconnection information. Um, and even if you yourself don't need financial assistance, it's always good to know what programs are out there to tell your neighbors about, um, to let people know, um, and just to have a general uh, knowledge on how uh, someone could get disconnected or what your rights are. So how to analyze your bills. First, we're going to talk about a ComEd bill. Um, and that Graphic on the screen is the ComEd territory, so it's Northern Illinois. Um, that's the, the service area that ComEd has. And the parts of the ComEd bill that we're going to talk about are the total usage graph, the supply, the delivery, the taxes and fees, and any updates on the bill. So this is an example of the front page of a ComEd bill. This is from back in January of last year. So it's a little old, but it's all the same. Um, that total usage graph is the first thing we like to point out that shows how many kilowatt hours you're using per month. And this graph is really helpful just to see your trends, to see when you use more, when you use less. Um, typically with electricity, we like to see a higher spike in the summer months because you're cooling your home with your air conditioner, which uh, uses electricity. And then we usually see a drop off in the winter months um, because people are heating their homes with gas. Um, but some people do have electric heat, so that will just depend on what you have. Um, 
Sometimes we will randomly see spikes, say in December, in electricity usage for things like Christmas lights. Um, sometimes people use humidifiers a lot in the winter, so there are different reasons why um, maybe your usage doesn't drop off in the winter. But typically, like on this bill, we see um, a little bit of a drop in the winter months for electricity. Um, the second part we usually like to point out on a ComEd bill is who is supplying your electricity. So right under that supply section, it says ComEd provides your energy. Um, I'm sure a lot of you are aware of this already, but if you're not, um, we all have the ability to choose who is supplying our energy, even though ComEd is the default energy supplier for electricity. Uh, there, are, there are alternative suppliers um, that you could choose to supply your energy. However, at Cub, we typically recommend against using an alternative supplier, and I'll get more into that um, when I talk about utility scams. But oftentimes, alternative suppliers will charge you a higher rate. Um, they'll try to rope you in with sort of a deal at the beginning and then raise the rates later on. And the reason why we usually recommend people stay with um, the default utility or the investor owned utility company in your area is because they are regulated um, by the Illinois Commerce Commission. So their rates are, um, it goes through a, a lot of different processes to determine what their rate is gonna be. Um, and they legally cannot profit off of the actual supply of the energy itself. So it's gonna be the lowest possible rate. Um, they can profit off of the delivery section on your bill, but alternative suppliers on the other hand um, can profit off of any section. So we just usually recommend that people stick with your um, regulated utility. Um, and then next I am going to talk about, the other side of your comment, Bill, um, some other things we like to point out in this section are the meter information. Uh, you wanna make sure that it says actual under the previous and present sections. Uh, if it doesn't and it says estimated, then that means that your meter is not actually being read and they're estimating how much energy you're using. And you may eventually have to pay that back if they were underestimating how much energy you were using. Um, or you may get um, a refund if they were overestimating. But with um, smart meters, this usually isn't a problem. This is more of a, an outdated thing, but it's always good just to check that your bill says that it's an actual reading. Um, this bill has the price to compare, which that is the supply rate that you would compare to alternative suppliers if you are on an alternative supplier or we're looking to be on one, which again, we don't recommend, but um, the price is there. So you can see if you are, um, if you have a less rate uh, than the comment rate. Um, this one says right there 11.049 cents. The current comment rate, um, like I said, this bill was from last year around this time, but the current rate is 9.665 cents per kilowatt hour. Um, and on your bill, it may uh, show up as 0.9665. Um, and yeah, again, so you just wanna check that rate, make sure if you are on an alternative supplier or something that you're not paying more than the, the current rate. And for electricity, that changes twice a year. Um, so the rate will change in June. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about gas bills. I know some people on this webinar may have North Shore as their gas supplier, um, and some people may have Nightcore. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about both. Um, North Shore covers that uh, top Northern uh, Illinois corner. Um, and North Shore also has the same owner as People's Gas. So their billing is gonna look the same. Um, and again, I'm gonna talk about the total usage, the supply section, the delivery, your taxes and fees, and the updates as well on the bill. 
So this is a people's gas bill, but like I said, they are the exact same for North Shore and people's gas. Um, the first thing we're gonna point out is that line item that says gas charge. That is how much you are actually paying for gas. Um, so on this bill, it says 220.7 therms, and then it says at um, 29 cents uh, per therm. So that's how much you're actually paying. Um, that's typically going to be the largest charge on your bill, um, other than the other delivery charges. Um, and again, this bill is a little bit outdated. This one is from 2021. Um, but it'll look the same, and the current rate is 66 cents per therm. Um, so as you can see, the rate went up quite a bit on this bill. It was 29 cents per therm. Um, but it's going to show up as 0.6601. Um, and then the other part we like to point out is your usage. So like I was saying about electricity, we would typically see um, uh, an increase in your gas usage in the winter if you have gas heat. If you don't have gas heat and you have electric, then it would be pretty steady throughout the year. Um, and then we would typically see a drop off in the winter months if um, if you have uh, if you have the gas heat and um, you use an air conditioner that takes electricity. Um, and like I talked about for ComEd, that shows your supplier. Um, North Shore and NICOR will also show your supplier, but on this bill for your North Shore bill, it'll be on the second page um, and it'll be under a little section where you can call the alternative supplier. So it's always good just to check that um, and check the second page of your bill. And then next I'm going to talk about a NICOR bill. If you have NICOR gas instead of North Shore, um, NICOR covers most of Northern Illinois, so it has a much bigger service area. Um, and just like the ComEd bill and the North Shore bill, it has um, the same parts. This is a NICOR bill. Um, for this bill to see how much you're paying, you would look under the natural gas cost. And this has the rates sort of separated. So this bill goes from December to um, January of last year. So it separates out those days into the rate for December and then the rate for January. So for the December rate under um, natural gas cost, it was 68 cents per therm. And then in January, it was 61 cents per therm. So it multiplies your usage for those months um, by that rate. Um, and the current nine core rate is around 69 cents per therm. And on your bill, it's going to be 0.69. Uh, so pretty similar to the rates around um, this time last year. And then the other thing we always point out, uh, like on the other bills, is the therm usage. On this uh, bill, on the night four billing system, it'll be a little graph on the right side. Um, and same thing, just like the North Shore bill, if you have gas heating, then you would see a drop off in the summer in your gas usage. Um, but a little bit different from the North Shore bill on the Night Court bill, where you would see that you have an alternative supplier is under the a message for you section. Um, it would have, there's usually a section that says additional charges or additional costs right under that box. Um, and then it'll say who your alternative supplier is and who you can contact um, if you do want to cancel or, um, or um, ask any questions about that. And I just saw um, a question in the chat that says, can you explain what is included in the customer charge? Um, it, it's pretty complicated what is included in the customer charge. It's usually just um, sort of the billing infrastructure and the staff that work for these companies that, um, that, that's actually going into that charge. Um, we don't know exactly every, you know, every dollar or why the charge is that much. Um, it's usually just sort of what they, um, how they need to upkeep their, their billing infrastructure and their staff. Um, but like I was saying about alternative suppliers, um, these, these investor owned utilities, so ComEd, NICOR, North Shore, um, your default utility, 
They cannot profit off of the supply itself of your energy, but they can profit off of the delivery charges. So we don't know exactly what goes into all of these charges. It's sort of more behind the scenes, more they're choosing what to charge you. Um, but we do fight a lot of these charges. So for example, um, if you look under the delivery charges, the last line item that says the qualified infrastructure charge. So this charge, um, it's gonna be on your Nightcore bill, People's Gas, as well as North Shore. Um, and this line item is supposed to be for infrastructure updates to the, you know, the pipelines, things like that. Um, but at Cub and a lot of other advocates think that this money is being mismanaged and they're not really um, updating the infrastructure um, and just sort of using it to profit. So we're fighting that, that charge right now on the bill. Um, and we'll sort of know, I, th I think in about a year, if that charge is going to keep um, showing up on your bills. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I can answer for the, the customer charge. But it is, it, it is sort of an annoying charge because if you look at um, the delivery charges, you're paying $47 before you're even using your gas, which is, in my opinion, pretty ridic ridiculous. Why is my cost per therm more? Um, I'm not sure what, how to answer that question. Um, I'm not sure if you, um, who your supplier is. Um, if you are on an alternative supplier, your cost per therm might be more. Um, and then another question, any idea why NICOR gas is more expensive than North Shore? So, there's a lot of different reasons why so, um, Nightcores is more expensive. Um, it's just the supply of gas that it, the rate is determined um, by the ICC. So there's a lot of different things that go into that um, decision, but it is regulated. It is determined to be fair and they can't profit off of that cost. Um, so it, there can be a lot of different reasons why the cost is different. Um, but just know that they're, they're not profiting off of that supply cost itself. So next I'm gonna talk about um, some utility scams to look out for. Um, like I was mentioning with alternative suppliers, um, there are a lot of different ways that they may try to rope you in to sign up to have your um, energy supplied by another company that is not the default utility. Um, and this is just one example. We have this picture of an alternative supplier that sent this in the mail um, offering a $100 Visa gift card if you signed up to have them supply your energy. Um, and to a lot of people, that's very enticing, you know, who wouldn't want to have $100. Um, but usually they end up either raising your rates or giving you a higher rate to start out with. So you end up, you know, losing $100 or more um, in the end. But this is just one example of a scam that we have seen out in the field. And like I was saying, they're called alternative suppliers, but these are the technical terms. Um, they're called ARIES, which is an alternative retail electric supplier, or ARGS, which is our alternative retail gas suppliers. Um, so traditionally, a utility charges you for the power you use and the cost of delivering it to you, um, but you can choose another company to supply the power itself. Um, but ComEd's supply rate or North Shore's or Nightcore's is going to be your lowest option depending on you know, your, where your territory is. Um, but whoever your default utility is, that's likely going to be your lowest option over time. Um, like I was saying, it's legal for them to make a profit off of what, it, what they're charging you for the supply itself. Um, so alternative suppliers, can charge whatever they want. Um, they're unregulated, so they can overcharge you on the supply. Um, and these pictures I have up here are just two examples of where you would see if you have an alternative supplier. 
um, on the ComEd bill, it would say right under that supply section, instead of saying ComEd supplies your energy, it would say the alternative supplier name. And then the second one is people's gas, but it would be the same for North Shore. It's on the back of the bill and it says um, sort of under that, the phone numbers it would have, um, who your alternative supplier is and how you can call them. And this is just another example. Um, so this person had a alternative supplier called Clean Choice Energy, they were previously known as Ethical Electric. Um, at this time, ComEd supply rate was 7.29 cents per kilowatt hour, and Clean Choice was charging them 13.4 cents per kilowatt hour. So they had a 17.46 um, profit on this bill specifically, but we've seen much worse. I've seen people who are being overcharged $200 from an alternative supplier, um, it can get pretty bad. And even if they offer an initial rate that is a lot lower than ComEd or NACOR or North Shore's rate, um, typically they will raise it without warning. Um, so if you are an, on an alternative supplier for either electric or gas, we just recommend um, Checking it every month if you are on a lower rate. Of course, we always want people to save money if they can. So if you're saving money, then there's nothing wrong with that. We just want to make sure that people um, are checking to make sure that the rate's not going up. So just some key points. Um, the Illinois Power Agency, along with the um, Illinois Commerce Commission, are in charge of the default utility rates. Um, and that is called the price to compare. Um, and it updates for electricity every um, October and every June. Um, and something else to mention is a municipal aggregation is when your city will sign a contract with a supplier, an alternative supplier on behalf of the residents and customers are automatically signed up unless they opt out. So some cities, um, it's basically like a, a group buy-in to an alternative supplier. Um, and you would probably know if your city has one, but if not, you can always check your bill. Um, and you're automatically signed up for that alternative supplier's rate unless you opt out. Typically cities do this because um, alternative suppliers give them a lower rate than the default utility. Um, but it's always good just to check and see if you want to be on the municipal aggregation if your city has one. Um, and you can check the list of cities who do have a municipal aggregation at pluginillinois.org. Um, and you can check the current price to compare for electricity or gas and see if you're saving money or not. Um, another thing to know is suppliers cannot charge termination fees. Um, so if you are on an alternative supplier and want to get off of it, they cannot charge you a fee for that. And once you cancel with the supplier, it can take a couple of billing cycles to show up. Just to go into the consumer protections a little bit more, um, solicitation by alternative suppliers cannot happen inside multi-unit buildings. Um, and the HEAT Act in 2020 had a few different consumer protections that are relevant for us. Um, they can't automatically renew you if you are on an alternative supplier from a fixed rate to a variable rate. Um, they can't end early, um, or it, the heat act ended early termination fees, so you can terminate your contract whenever you'd like, and they're not going to charge you. Um, and also lie heat customers can't be signed up with alternative electric suppliers. And if you're not sure what lie heap is, that is um, energy assistance um, for uh, income eligible people. Um, and there's just more enforcement on the Illinois Commerce Commission and Attorney General side. And there's also more rig rigorous training for sales reps um, because of the heat act. Next, I'm gonna talk about energy efficiency and how you can be more efficient in your home um, and try to lower your usage a bit. 
Just some general tips. Um, we always like to say the cheapest kilowatt hour or a therm is the one that you don't use. Um, so a big way that you can get your electric bill down is by having energy efficiency, energy efficient lighting. So if you have LED light bulbs, that's great. Um, and just also turning lights off when they're not in use does make a big difference. Um, vampire power is also uh, a, a result of 23% of your power consumption in your home usually. So vampire power is when you have things plugged in that are not in use. So if you have your phone charger or something plugged into the wall that you're currently not using, it's still drawing electricity from the grid. So that's still gonna um, up your usage. So it's always good to just unplug things when you're not using them um, and just be aware of, you know, what's plugged in, what's turned on, that sort of thing. Um, and then I'm also gonna talk about some demand response programs. So things that you can enroll in to take advantage of sort of um, when the when there's peak times on the grid, when there's not, and, and some savings that uh, are a result of that. And just some other things in this graphic um, that you can do to make your home more efficient are you can replace your doors and windows. That really does make a big difference and just sealing them as well. Um, I know a lot of people put some plastic over their windows that does make a big difference as well as upgrading your appliances, uh, sealing your floorboards, again, switching to LED light bulbs um, and sealing any openings or your attic, um, as well as adding more insulation. So I just saw a question that says, does using smart TVs increase electricity? Um, any, any appliance or anything you're using is going to obviously draw electricity, um, but a newer TV should be drawing less electricity than say an older inefficient model. Um, so it's not that a, a smart TV is not going to be drawing any more electricity than um, a TV that's not a smart TV. Uh, both are gonna draw electricity. You wanna make sure that you know, maybe it's unplugged when it's not in use, but um, it's gonna be better for, for your home than a super inefficient old TV. And these are just some programs and some energy efficiency um, options through ComEd. Um, so for homeowners and for renters, there's the IWAP program, and this is free weatherization. Um, and this is for people who are below 200% of the federal poverty level um, for both the homeowners and the renters. Um, there's also the ComEd single family income eligible energy efficiency program, which offers free weatherization. Um, you have to be 80% below the um, area median income. And then there's also the home energy assessment, which I'll talk a little bit about. Um, the home energy assessment is offered through ComEd in combination with NICOR and all the big um, investor owned utility companies. Basically what happens with this is you sign up for an assessment and one of these companies will come out and do sort of an audit of your home and see where you can be more energy efficient which is great because um, at Cub, we can't necessarily go into your home and tell you what's drawing more electricity, what uh, where the problem areas are in your home. Um, but this program, they can come into your home, see where you can be more energy efficient. Um, and along with the program, they offer some energy efficient products for free, like LED light bulbs, um, smart power strips, um, that sort of stuff. They have energy efficient shower heads, which helps not only your water bill, but also your gas bill for heating the water um, and stuff like that. So if you're interested in having someone come into your home, do a walkthrough, tell you where you can be more energy efficient, you can go to ComEd's website or NICOR or North Shore. Any of those will have um, this program on it.
And now I'm going to talk a little bit about demand response programs, which I mentioned. Um, demand response just means that you are responding to how much pressure is on the grid, the electricity grid, um, and you're being more energy efficient as a result of you know, the, the pressure on the grid. The first one is called Central AC Cycling. So this is a program that um, occurs in the summer months from May 1st to October. Um, what happens is someone from ComEd will come out and put a little device on your central air conditioner. And this cycles off the compressor. So it, it doesn't actually turn the air conditioner off. It'll just cycle the compressor off when there are peak times on the grid. So typically peak times would be um, in the middle of the day, if it's really hot in the summer, um, or usually when people get off of work around 5 p.m. Um, so I just saw the question that asked, what's the name of the assessment program? It's called the Home Energy Assessment. Um, if you look up just Home Energy Assessment with ComEd or NICOR, it should come up. Um, sometimes it'll say single family home energy assessment uh, or multifamily if you are a renter, um, but home energy assessment should, should pop up. Um, so yeah, for central AC cycling, it will, um, they'll come out, put a device on your central AC, it'll cycle it off when there are really peak times on the grid. Um, most people we talk to who are part of this program don't notice that they're AC is being cycled off, um, that it doesn't get much hotter in your home, um, and the temperature doesn't change more than a few degrees, uh, and both of the cycling options will exclude the weekends and the holidays, so you won't be um, experiencing the cycling during a weekend or something. Um, and there are two different options for cycling, 50% and 100%. And people usually see about $40 um, in bill credits during the summer months. The next program is called hourly pricing. Um, this one is a little bit more complicated. Uh, the first program, central AC cycling, there's really not a lot of loss associated with that program. You really just, um, you know, your AC is cycled off and then you get credits on your bill. Um, there's not really much you have to do. Um, hourly pricing, however, we, we recommend this program, but we also recommend that people sort of exercise caution with it. Um, so most of us pay just a default rate for our electricity. Um, whatever the default regulated rate is at the time, um, we pay that flat rate for our energy. But, um, energy rates actually change every hour. So th with this program, you can basically pay for energy by the hour and you essentially try to use energy when there are less um, people using energy at the same time. And I'll talk a little bit more about that and show you some graphs and things. Um, but basically with this program, you just have to be aware of when the peak times are, when people are using more energy, and when you would um, sort of use less. So this program is really recommended for people who have something like an electric vehicle or people who have um, electric heating because you're using a lot more electricity and you can sort of shift your habits to use it more during the off peak times. So. Typically, the peak times would be just during the day or right when people get off of work. Um, but if you're on hourly pricing, then you might want to, you know, charge your vehicle at night or run your dishwasher at night or do that sort of thing. Um, so I'm going to talk, show you some graphs and talk a little bit more about this program. Um, this is just one example of a graph that you would see if you were on hourly pricing you would look at this graph and see what the prices are gonna be per hour. So on this particular day, um, most of the time the prices are actually below what the, what the default rate is. So those are the, the lines in green. That's what the, um, the, time, the times when the price is below the default rate. Um, however, when they're orange, those are the times when the price would be above the default rate. 
So, you know, you'd have to just sort of shift your usage and use more electricity during those green times to save more money. And I'm gonna show another graph. Um, they show the day ahead prices if you're on hourly pricing. So you can sort of plan out when you're gonna use more of your energy. Um, so this day, most of the time it was below the regulated rate. And then you can see the day ahead prices. It looks like it's gonna jump a bit. Um, so you can just sort of plan your day around that. Um, and in general, people do actually save money on this program. I think, um, I don't know the numbers, but I think, you know, it's, it's most of the people on this program do see pretty significant savings, but it just requires a lot more work on behalf of the consumer to be checking what the prices are gonna be and um, the day ahead prices and sort of shift their habits. Um, so if you're someone who has a lot of time or is really interested in this and wants to be checking these prices, or if you're someone who has an electric vehicle or has electric heating or just uses a lot of electricity, then this might be a good program. But if you're someone who doesn't want to be checking the rates, um, doesn't really use a lot of electricity and um, doesn't have a lot of time to really look at the graph and see how much electricity is gonna cost, then this might not be the program for you. The last um, demand response program that I'm gonna talk about is called peak time savings. Um, so sort of different from hourly pricing, this program has no real risk associated with it. Um, peak time savings is just when there are peak times on the grid during the summer months, ComEd is going to call sort of a, a peak time event. So they'll text you or email you if you're part of this program and alert you to when there's um, a high usage period. Um, and I think usually there are around four of these per summer, per during the summer months when um, there's just really high usage on the grid and they need people to just use less energy. So if you're signed up with this program and you get that alert, and you use less energy than you typically would, um, then you get a credit on your bill for the kilowatt hours that you saved. Um, you don't get penalized if you use more. Um, nothing happens. Uh, you either get savings or you don't. So we recommend everyone just be part of this program. There's no risk to it. Um, you can really see savings if you are part of it. Um, see a question that says, we had hourly pricing for a year. Um, every month we got a report that we were saving, but after a year, ComEd said they made a mistake and we were actually paying more. Um, if one has a dispute like this with ComEd, who could we contact? So you can actually contact us. Um, yeah, so you contact them for nine months and no resolution. Um, yeah, you can call our hotline, which I'll have up again at the end of the presentation. Um, yeah, stuff like this, I'm not surprised that um, ComEd would do something like this. And we have a whole consumer advocacy department that deals with disputes like this and cases. And we actually contact the utility companies on your behalf and talk to them and sort of figure out what happened. Um, so yeah, you can call our hotline and they will open up a case for you and get that settled. So my last section is going to be on financial assistance and disconnections. And like I sort of mentioned before, it's always just good to know about this stuff um, and to alert your neighbors and to just, you know, be aware of your rights and everything. So for financial assistance, there is the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program or LIHEAP. This is really the, the biggest program, the one that a lot of people know of. Um, and this is a, a direct payment that goes to your utility company. Um, and it's for customers who are at or below 200% of the federal poverty level. Um, you have to have proof of 30-day gross household, household income. Um, and you can apply from September 1st to May 31st. So the application period is open right now, and you would go to your local community action agency to apply. So in Cook County, it's CETA. 
Um, I'm not sure exactly the organizations that would be up um, in your counties, but you can always look at the um, Help Illinois Families website um, to get more information, the government website. Um, and so they do from September 1st to May 31st for this program or until funds run out. This year, they usually in, in most years, they don't run out of funds. Um, but this year there has been a lot of demand. So if you are eligible for this program and you need some assistance, I would definitely recommend applying as soon as possible. Um, the second program is IWAP, which is Illinois Home Weatherization Assistance Program. And this provides customers with weatherization services for their home. Um, and again, you have to be at or below 200% of the federal poverty level. And you can apply at any time until funding runs out. The last one is called PIP or Percentage of Income Payment Plan. Um, this program is currently closed, but it has been an option in previous years. Um, you would pay a percentage of your income to your utility instead of the actual um, money that you owe. Um, but like I said, it's currently closed. It may open next year. We're not entirely sure yet. So some disconnection information just to be aware of. Disconnections are not allowed for residential gas and electric heat accounts if it's going to be below 32 degrees or expected to fall below 32 for the next 24 hours um, or if it's a weekend or holiday following a day that was below 32 degrees. Um, disconnections are not allowed for um, electricity if it's going to be above 95 degrees or expected to be above 95 degrees for the next 24 hours or a weekend or holiday following a day that was above 95 degrees. Um, LIHEAP accounts from December 1st to March 31st, um, you cannot be disconnected if you are on a, a LIHEAP account. Um, and it also applies to service members who have just been assigned to duty. If you are um, a service member who has just been assigned to duty, you cannot um, be disconnected if you are a LIHEAP account as well. Disconnections are allowed. Um, if you get a warning, they always have to warn you. Um, and you fail to pay an entire past due bill or a security deposit if they ask you to pay one. Um, if you default on a DPA or a deferred payment arrangement, which is something that you would arrange with your utility company if you are not able to pay um, your full amount that's due, or if you deny them access to read your meter, then they do um, have the ability to disconnect you. Um, a warning is not required if there is no customer of record, if you are tampering with your meter, or if there's some sort of dangerous condition like a gas leak, um, then they can just shut it off to fix the leak. Um, but yeah, this, this information is always important to know. And if you do receive some sort of warning that you're gonna be disconnected, um, make sure to give us a call on our hotline or call your utility. Um, sometimes they'll work out arrangements to if you can just say, you know, I can pay this amount right now, I can't pay all of it, then they may um, put off disconnecting you, but it's always good to just call um, and see if you can do anything before they disconnect you. And that is all I have for the content of this presentation. If you would like to learn more about CUB, you can visit our website. Um, we have lots of different resources. We have so many different guides on um, energy efficiency, on solar energy, on electric vehicles, on really anything um, related to energy. Um, we have stuff on the new um, Inflation Reduction Act, lots of stuff. Um, our communications team does a lot of work on making sure um, you know, all of these resources are out to you guys. And we have lots of information on new clean energy legislation. And then that is our hotline number that you can call um, if you wanna open up a case against uh, your utility company or want us to contact them on your behalf or whatever it may be. 
Um, or if you just have questions, you can always call our hotline. And I saw that um, someone raised their hand. I'm not sure if they want to ask their question. If it's possible to put your question in the Q&A box or the chat, um, we can do that. Thanks so much for all this great information about ways that um, people can save on their energy bills. Yeah. If you do have any questions, go ahead and add them to the Q&A or the chat box. Um, one question I had, you had mentioned that Hub was fighting um, something on the gas bills. Is there anything else that Cub is currently working on fighting for consumers? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so right now in January at the beginning, um, it's still January, but at the beginning of the year, um, every major utility company um, filed for a rate hike and for the um, uh, to be approved by the Illinois Commerce Commission. Um, so they are trying to raise rates again. Um, so that's a big thing that Cub is going to be working on this whole year, just trying to keep rates down. Um, and yeah, it, it gets pretty complicated with how the rates are worked out, but um, that's going to be a, a big focus for us this year. It does look like some Irma is raising her hand, so I'm going to go ahead and allow you to talk if you want to ask your question. Okay, unmute. Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, the under in the on the electric bill under taxes and fees that carbon free energy resource adjustment that is. The amount that uh, ComEd is refunding to us. Yeah, so that it has a minus on the amount. Yep. Yeah, I'm glad you pointed that out. Um, so that line item is for all the different um, investments that have been made in clean energy and energy efficiency, which actually resulted in. Um, more energy being basically there's more energy on the grid um than was being taken if that makes sense so mm -hmm. everyone in comed territory gets a credit for that um oh. yeah so we can thank um clean energy legislation for um helping us get it, that. Runs, it runs for a year i believe yep until may because i have electric heat and it's pretty high <laughs> you know yeah. Okay, thank you. That's what I wanted to know if I was correct that that was a, a minus. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's great to see um, a credit on our bills. Yep. Uh, yes. What's the one they have it also have a, a, a minus sign under um, the supply, I believe it was. I don't know what that one is. Oh, it's not on this bill, but it's on another one. And is that another? I didn't understand that one. It was in the, um, I think it's delivery, either delivery or supply. I don't have that bill handy here. Yeah, so that could be, um, if you are signed up for any of those demand response programs, like the um, peak time savings or something like that, um, you might see a credit on your supply section as well. Uh -huh, um, yeah, I used to be on the hourlies, so I'm familiar with that. Okay, yeah. Okay. It, Thank you for your question. Thank you. Does anyone have any other questions? You want to go ahead and put those in the Q&A in the chat. Um, so it looks like Tamara has a question. So I'll go ahead and allow you to talk. Hi. Hi. Um, I was just reading this evening prior to our um, 
call with you today that some of my neighbors in Northbrook received notices in their mailboxes indicating that they were going to be moved to a, another electric provider or they could opt out and stay with ComEd. Is that real? Yeah, so um, in one of my slides, I mentioned municipal aggregation. So that is when your city signs you up essentially for an alternative supplier. They make a deal um, with the supplier and um, you can opt out of it. Um, it. It's sort of your choice, but um, yeah, I, I would check, I, I would have them first check with the city and see if that's what's going on. Um, I don't think alternative suppliers would just be able to send out um, sort of a, a lie like that to get people to sign up, but I would have them just check with their city to make sure that they, um, that they are doing a municipal aggregation um, and then they can choose whether or not they want to be on that aggregation with the alternative supplier or stay with ComEd. Um, but typically the, the municipal aggregations are done to save people money with alternative suppliers. So they would just wanna check um, the rate that the municipal aggregation would be compared to the to ComEd's rate. And they also are welcome to call our hotline if they have questions about that too. Thank you. Yeah, I, I saw several posts on um, the next door site. So mm -hmm. but it seems like the village would have sent out some advance notification to residents uh, about the change. Yeah, yeah. So um, but I live in Glenview. I haven't received anything, but I was curious. Yeah, it's good that they're talking about it and um, making sure everyone's aware. Um, yeah, we definitely recommend people talk to their neighbors and see what see what's going on. But um, yeah, they should check with their city first and then decide if they want to be on that aggregation or not. Thank you. Thank you. We just have a few more minutes. If anyone has any more last minute questions, you can put those in the Q&A or the chat. So I see um, this question that says, what does a rate change really mean? My NICOR bill had a rate per therm change every month and all have been on the upside. Um, so, our rate does change every month for gas. Um, sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. Uh, I know last year for, I live in people's gas territory and it was above a dollar per therm. Um, and now it's down to around 60 cents per therm, I believe. Um, so the rates for gas just change every month regardless. But what's happening right now with the Illinois Commerce Commission is, um, all of these big utility companies are filing for rate increases. So we would see rates go up even more than they already are right now, which we're trying to fight because obviously utilities are very expensive right now. Um, a lot of people cannot afford their utility bills. Um, so yeah, a, a rate increase, uh, at least determined, you know, in front of the Illinois Commerce Commission uh, would mean that we would all be paying for it essentially. Um, and yeah, the prices for gas have been going up quite a bit uh, ever since the pandemic. And there are a lot of different reasons for that. But uh, yeah, we're definitely trying to, to get rates down or at least to, to halt any sort of rate hike right now. Thanks for that question. It doesn't look like we have any other questions coming in, um, but thanks again to Kate for all this great information and lots of good tips for ways that we can save money on our utility bills. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Um, don't hesitate to call our hotline or reach out to Cobb if you have any other questions um, or if anything comes up. 
Okay, thanks again. Thank you.